Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. We had a game. He, he just joined us. Um, I'd taken him from Crystal Palace on a, a loan. We were, we were, I'd taken over from Steve Cottrell. Steve had gone to Sunderland with Howard Wilkinson. And then I took over. Uh, George Burley was going to get the job. Yeah. Watched them play on a Wednesday night and pulled out for the job. <laughs> oh, <okay>. so, you, <laughs> know, you know, they got no chance of staying up. Anyway, I took over. Um, and first we 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 got Addy. I'd had Addy at, uh, at Gillingham, obviously. I bought him from Norwich, took him to Gillingham, which was fabulous, and then sold him for a massive profit at Bristol City. But anyway, the, this game, he ran from side to side to side of the pitch about five times, Ben, honestly, non-stop. And the whole stand stood up. We were winning one nil, and we were under pressure. And he just kept going from side to side. And Ben will tell you what he was like. He was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, honest as a day, wasn't he? Uh, honest as a fantastic, day. Fantastic. Um, and then we've got Carla Saba, Kenwin Jones, Sabs, yeah, Liam Lawrence, Gifton, No Williams, yeah, Crouchy, Solomon Rondon, yeah, uh, Ryan Shawcross, and Mamadi Sidibe, yeah. Yeah. They complete the top ten. Yeah. Um, another quick one then. Um, most appearances for Tony under Pulis. Me. Which player has got the most appearances under Tony Pulis? It'd have to be a Stoke player again, would it? Yes. Ryan. Sure, Cross. Well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. very, yeah. very good. Yeah. Uh, second, Rory Delap. Yeah. Third, Ricardo Fuller. Glenn Whelan. Andy Wilkinson. Wilco. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Robert Hoof and then Matthew Everington. There's what. There's one there. Glenn Whelan. Right, so we signed Glenn from um, to, to, to Sheffield Wednesday. Was it Sheffield Wednesday yeah, for about five hundred yeah. grand? And it, a promotion here, we get promotion. And I'm looking at the team, and I'm thinking, I need another midfield player. I'm not not so sure Glenn will step up to it. So we get uh, uh, oh, the lad from Wolves, uh, Kitely Oliver Jana. Oh, Oliver Jana. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we bring him in. After about five or six games, Glenn gets in. Takes his place, plays all the games. The following year, I'm thinking, we need, you know, we just need that little bit more. Then I go out and get another midfield player. I think Palacios from from Tottenham, take him. After about five or six games, Glenn steps up again, plays. And that's what he did all his life, honestly. And I have so much respect for him. He, he most probably hates me for trying to replace him all the time. But he, similar to what we talked about, he just went, right, that's the challenge. Stepped it up. All the time, Ben. And as a lad, you know, if, if anybody's going to go into coaching, you know, people, you know, and, and there was people there who I think should be involved in coaching. Glenn should be one of them because his attitude and his application when he's down in the dumps yeah. is just phenomenal. That's a good, yeah. good resilience yeah. level. Oh, oh, fabulous. Yeah. There, was 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 a player, fabulous. there was a player you mentioned there, Ben, um, Rory Delap. Oh, the throw in, the throw in. <laughs> and you've got a funny story. Well, it's a, it's quite a famous clip, isn't it, of uh, yeah. Bo- Boaz? Um, so obviously, we, you know Boaz, you know Boaz, yeah. Boaz at uh, West Brom. But um, I actually texted him the other day. I said, "Is there any? Can you remember any funny sort of Tony?" And he went, oh, "To be fair, we probably can't tell a lot of them." But yeah, there's a few. <laughs> anyway, he said, "He said, just ask him, just ask him about um, about the time when um, he was playing for Hull." And you're obviously Stoke manager, Rory Delap. Um, so obviously it was that time where he was in his pomp of yeah, slinging it yeah, in the box. Yeah. And um, there's a famous clip going around the internet. And I know you don't watch much of the internet, Tony, but um, the ball basically, he's run out to the corner flag almost, Boaz has, right? And the player's shutting him down and he can either put the ball out for a throw in or he can turn <laughs> around. <laughs> kick, it, kick it for a corner. <laughs> That's quick thinking though, isn't it? It's genius is what yeah. it is. It's yeah. genius because at that moment in time, genuinely, a throw in was yeah. more of a threat yeah. with a Rory Delap throw than a corner for Stoke. City, wasn't it? Well, we knew exactly where that throwing was going and how flat it was. It was, it was just, it, it, the, the, I'm not sure if Ben was there at the time, but it, we finished training the one day and the lads are having a competition over the far pitch on the training ground, Ben. Who can throw the ball the longest? And they, they, they've, they've put 50 quid in or whatever they've done. <laughs> yeah. And Kempy's watching them. I'm doing something with Will Cole, uh, Andy uh, uh, Dicko, Cal Dickinson. So I'm doing something with the two young fullbacks, and then I walk over and Kempy comes over to me. And says, "Have you seen Rory throw the ball? <laughs> oh, this is class." I've gone, no. <laughs> Ro- like, so said, it was Kempy who discovered yeah, him. It was Kempy. He said, oh, "He said I can't believe it." So they're all walking in. He's gone, Rory, come here. So he walks over. He said, 
Shut the gaffer. <laughs> so he goes, <laughs> and he throws her almost over the pitch. <laughs> and I said, Rory, where have you been hiding that? He <laughs> said, oh, I was, he threw for his county, javelin thrower. No. Right, and okay. he's got, he's got, he's, is it ambidextrous or whatever in his Oh, it can shoulders. basically go over the so limit. So he, he can actually get further than most people. <laughs> more leverage. <laughs> yeah, more leverage. <clears throat> so we, we, we then talk about, we don't want it looped. We just want it thrown yeah and then we used to have three positions that we took up um and one was one on the goalkeeper if we yeah. could get in front of, stop the goalkeeper coming to collect it then we'd have a near post movement and we'd have middle of the goal coming across the penalty spot and coming across the goal goalkeeper and sorry and one round the back and we uh, people used to think oh it just happens but we used to work without doubt you did yeah we, we used to work at stoke really really hard on that it was it was murder to face honestly and against the murder. Better, against the better teams where we you know we needed to break the game up we didn't want a free flowing game especially the first couple of years in the premier league you know every time we stopped and rory then would be throwing it just inside our own half yeah. all it's the amazing. players get fed up with the game you know the top players yeah. you know, oh my god here we go again <laughs> they would though they, and, they, and, and, and yeah and it, it it just broke the game up but it Again, one one story about uh, Wenger, who was obviously synonymous with the with the, the, the Stoke supporters. Um, we're playing him in the cup. We got him in the third, fourth round of the FA Cup at home. We've drawn him, um, and Patrick Vieira and Jans Lehmann were on a, go a coaching course with me. Uh, uh, I, I did a, um, a license down in South Wales, and they, the two lads were there. And they were waiting for me afterwards. And I'm thinking, oh, blimey, what are they going to say to Arsenal players? We've absolutely mullered them most of the times at the Britannia at oh, Bet365 Stadium. So they wait for me, and they tell me this story, and they say it, it, it was the only time Arsene Wenger ever, ever coached defensive work was when we played you in that cup game. Uh, and he said he had us there for about 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. This is where they throw it. This is what I want you to do. This is what I don't want you to do. You know, da, 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 da. You know, the, obviously the throw-in is, is, that's how they, they usually beat us. Or, so he worked all on this. Um, and he said he was, you know, I'd never known him so uptight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going in, and, in his and head. We're thinking, in his head massively, yeah. We're thinking, it's only Stoke. <laughs> so anyway, we get there. And he says, we get there. And the team comes through. Rory's not playing. So he says, not only does Rory not play, but you murder us 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says, Wenger comes in afterwards. He's lost for words. <laughs> you know, usually he'd blame, yeah, he'd blame yeah, yeah, yeah. we should ban throw-ins and we should do this, that and the other. He had nowhere to go. Nothing to say. Fully <laughs> in his head. Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.